There's going to come a time in your Rails career where you're going to be building a Rails app and the question is, should you pair it with React or stick with Hotwire? React has been the popular choice for adding rich interactive UIs on top of Rails, but Hotwire is Rails' own way of keeping things fast and simple without loading your app down with tons of JavaScript. Both have been around for a while, but they take very different paths to solve the same problem. In this video, we're going to break down exactly how React and Hotwire work with Rails, what makes each one tick, and which setup might actually save you time, headaches, or even help you build something better. There's going to be no buzzwords or no hype, just real talk to help you figure out what fits your next project. If you're curious which one wins for you, keep watching. Alright, before we dive into the nitty gritty, let's take a step back and set the stage. What exactly are we comparing here? First up, React with Rails. React created by Facebook is a JS library that's all about building user interfaces by breaking down your UI into reusable components. Think of it like Lego blocks, you build small pieces and put them together to make something complex. When used with Rails, React handles the entire front end and Rails acts as the back end. This setup gives you a lot of flexibility and control over how your app looks and behaves in the browser. On the flip side, we have Hotwire with Rails. Hotwire isn't a standalone framework. It's actually created by the Rails team themselves as a way to build modern interactive apps without relying heavily on JavaScript frameworks like React. Instead, Hotwire takes a different approach. It keeps most of the logic on the server and sends HTML snippets over the wire to the browser, which then updates the page dynamically. So instead of shipping a massive JS app to the client, your browser just gets a small chunk of HTML and swaps them in as needed. Hotwire is actually made up of a few parts, Turbo Drive, Turbo Frames, and Stimulus JS, but the main idea is to keep the app fast and simple by doing most of the heavy lifting on the server. Now, why does this matter because both React and Hotwire tackled the problem of building rich, interactive web apps, but from very different angles. React came about when apps started getting more dynamic. Think dashboards, complex forms, or real-time features, and developers wanted more control over UI updates without reloading pages. So React's component-based client-side rendering approach made a lot of sense. It gives you a lot of freedom, but with that freedom comes complexity, and you need to manage a lot of state and logic in JavaScript, which can get tricky as apps grow. Hotwire, on the other hand, comes from the Rails philosophy of convention over configuration. It's about making developers productive by handling as much as possible on the server, reducing the amount of code in JavaScript you have to write and maintain. Instead of building a full JS front end, Hotwire uses smart HTML updates to create an interactive experience. So basically when you're choosing between React and Hotwire with Rails, you're picking between a JS heavy front end where the browser does most of the work and a server driven approach where Rails keeps control and just updates the browser efficiently. Both have their strengths and knowing their origins and philosophies helps us understand when and why you might choose one over the other. Alright, so now that we've got the basics down, let's dig into how React with Rails and Hotwire with Rails actually work under the hood. One of React's key innovations is the virtual DOM. Normally when you update the UI, the browser has to re-render parts of the page, which can get slow if you're updating frequently. React keeps a lightweight copy of the actual DOM in memory, and this is the virtual DOM. And when something changes, React figures out the minimal set of changes needed and updates only those parts in the real DOM. This makes UI updates super efficient and snappy. React components are typically written in JSX, which looks like a mix of HTML and JavaScript. It lets you describe what your UI should look like while embedding logic directly. This is powerful because you can create highly dynamic interfaces, but it also means you're writing a lot of JS that runs in the browser. When you combine React with Rails, React takes over rendering the front end entirely, meaning the browser loads a big JS bundle and Rails usually provides data through JSON APIs. React handles rendering, state management and event handling, giving you full control over client-side behavior. Now Hotwire takes a very different approach. Instead of shipping heavy JS apps to the client, Hotwire relies on Rails to do most of the work on the server and just sends back updated HTML snippets to the browser, kind of like sending mini pages instead of rebuilding everything from scratch. Hotwire is made up of a few parts, but the big player is Turbo, which itself includes Turbo Drive and Turbo Frames. Turbo Drive intercepts link clicks and forms submissions and replaces the full page reload with an Ajax request that updates the page body. This means your app feels fast because you're avoiding full page refreshes, but you don't have to write complex JS to manage all the UI changes. And Turbo Frames allow you to update just parts of the page independently. Imagine your page split into sections and when something changes in one frame, say a comment section or a form, Turbo only replaces that part's HTML. On top of that, there's Stimulus.js, a lightweight JS framework designed to sprinkle small, focused behavior on your HTML elements without taking over the entire front end. So to put it simply, React moves most of the UI logic and rendering to the client's browser, building everything dynamically with JS components. Hotwire keeps the logic mostly on the server, sending small bits of HTML to update the page as needed, making things feel dynamic without heavy JS. So in the initial load times, Hotwire generally wins, but in the interaction speed, React often pulls ahead because all UI updates happen locally without needing to talk back to the server for every interaction. And for SEO and accessibility, both perform well, but Hotwire's server rendered HTML is naturally SEO friendly, and for network usage, Hotwire sends smaller incremental HTML updates rather than big JSON payloads in JavaScript, which can reduce bandwidth usage and improved perceived performance. To back this up, some benchmarks and community reports show Hotwire can feel faster out of the gate, especially for typical CRUD style applications. Alright, performance is one thing, but let's be honest, if building the app feels like pulling teeth, it doesn't matter how fast it is, that's where developer experience comes in. How easy is it to get started? 
it, how smooth is the workflow, and how much of a headache is it to maintain things down the road. Let's start with hotwire with Rails. If you're already comfortable with Rails, hotwire feels like a natural extension of the framework. You write standard Rails views, use Rails helpers, and add interactivity with Turbo and Stimulus where you need it. In practice, this makes development faster and simpler. You can build a new feature with minimal setup, create your controller, write your view, sprinkle in some Turbo frames or Stimulus for interactivity, and you're done. Now over to React with Rails. This approach often requires a bit more moving parts. You'll typically have a Rails backend serving APIs and a React frontend consuming them. That means you're working in two worlds, Ruby on the server and JSX on the client. You also need to set up a build system, whether that's Webpack or Vite or something else, to bundle your React code. If you're used to working in a single language stack, this can feel like a bigger mental load because you're switching between Ruby and JS constantly. You're also making more decisions, how to structure your components, manage state, handle routing, and integrate testing. The upside is that this flexibility lets you architect your frontend exactly how you you want, with a massive ecosystem of tools and libraries at your disposal. But now that we've looked at how Hotwire with Rails and React would actually work, let's answer the question that's probably on your mind. When should you choose one over the other? Here's when Hotwire with Rails makes the most sense. Hotwire shines in applications where the UI is mostly forms, lists, and content, like dashboards, admin panels, project management tools, or e-commerce backends. If you want to ship features fast, if SEO matters a lot, if your audience use slower devices or weaker networks, and you want minimal complexity. But React with Rails is the better choice when the UI is highly interactive, Real-time updates are critical, you want a truly app-like feel in the browser, you need fine-grained UI control, and you plan to scale the front-end independently. But here's something important, you don't have to go all-in on either one. Many Rails teams use Hotwire for most of the app to keep things simple, and then drop in React for specific sections that require heavy interactivity. So for example, a React component for the product customization tool, where customers drag and drop features to design their own item. So pick Hotwire if you're aiming for speed of development, lower complexity, SEO-friendly pages, and a Rails native workflow, and pick React if your project is UI-heavy, demands a lot of clients logic or needs a native app feel in the browser. And pick both if you can split responsibilities, let Hotwire handle the bulk of the app and use React only where advanced interactivity is required. So there you have it. React with Rails and Hotwire with Rails, two very different ways, two very different ways to build powerful web apps. If there's one takeaway I hope you got from this, it's that you don't have to be Team React or Team Hotwire. Hotwire is fast and simple, but React is flexible and interactive. If you found this breakdown helpful, do me a quick favor, hit that like button, it really helps more people discover videos like this, and also make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next one.